So thank you for watching this short video. I'm Christopher Viscopoulos of Medical Specialist Associates. This is another short video in our Butterfly IQ series. And in this particular one, we're looking at methods to determine left ventricular ejection fraction with the Butterfly IQ. So recall that at the current moment at the time of this presentation, one of the limitations of the Butterfly is that we really only have M mode available to us for any quantitative metrics. And so that being said, we can use M mode to determine what's called fractional shortening. Let's take a look at at what fractional shortening is. So the first thing that we want to do um, uh, to determine ejection fraction with the, with the fractional shortening method is to get a parasternal short axis view. And here I show you a typical parasternal short axis view. And intentionally, we don't show you the best parasternal short axis view we've ever gotten in our entire life. And that's because we're critical care doctors and the reality is is that oftentimes we can't get the best views in the ICU for numerous reasons. Patients on the ventilator, they can't position, they're in pain, there are bandages on, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But really if you just get any reasonable view of a parasternal short axis view, ideally maybe above the papillary muscles, um, um, uh, and as long as you can get this donut maybe right here, right in the center of the screen, so that when you put the M mode on, it goes straight perpendicular through the left ventricle, that would be best. So let's take a look at what this would look like here. So here we lined up our donut view, our parasternal short axis view, right in the middle of the screen. Here we put our M mode on, and we have that coming straight down, right perpendicular through. And what does it show us? Well, what it shows us here is it shows us here contraction, between the anterior and posterior walls here, and then a relaxation, and then again, contraction again of the anterior and posterior walls, and then relaxation, and then contraction again. And when we have this pattern, what we're able to get is a left ventricular end diastolic diameter and a left ventricular end systolic diameter. So here you see the first line, which is that left ventricular end diastolic diameter here, and we have a value of 4.89 centimeters. And here we have our left ventricular end systolic diameter. We have a value of 3.18 centimeters. So the question is, is now what do we do with this information? Well, what we do is, is we can plug it into the formula for fractional shortening. So what is the fractional shortening formula? It is 100 times left ventricular end diastolic diameter minus left ventricular end systolic diameter divided by left ventricular end diastolic diameter. So let's plug the numbers in. 100 times 4.89 minus 3.18 divided by 4.89 is 34%. So what we can do is just stop here. And what we can do is we can remember that a normal fractional shortening is greater than or equal to 25 to 30%. And a severely impaired fractional shortening is less than 15 to 20%. However, for the vast majority of our colleagues, they're not gonna be comfortable with fractional shortening. Unless if they're a cardiologist or a critical care doctor who does a lot of echocardiography, it's really better to convert this into an ejection fraction. Luckily enough, it's super easy to do. So the conversion to ejection fraction is simply fractional shortening times two. So here we take our fractional shortening value of 34% times two, and we have an ejection fraction of 68%. So that's one way to do it. Let's go over another way to do it, to have a little more depth in our ability to get this value. Another way to do it here is to take a parasternal long axis view. So here I show a parasternal long axis view right here. And now here, instead of getting that donut view and putting the M mode line straight down through here, we can put it on a slight angle and it can come through here above the papillary muscles. So that angle is one reason why we tend not to do it this way uh, instead of the other way, um, because you have a small angle error. Um, however, that being said, if you just remember that these are all approximations, um, then that's fine. Um, uh, that, that's an acceptable small error um, to have. So here what we do now is, as I mentioned, we take our M mode on and we put it down straight through here, and we're going to get the same values we got before. Um, so here we're going to, you know, follow this tracing here and then find an area of relaxation, which is right here. And we're going to take our left ventricular end diastolic diameter here, find an area of contraction that we see here between the anterior and posterior walls. And we're going to draw a line across here and get our left ventricular end systolic diameter. So the values that we have here now are 3.64 and 4. Uh, and 2.47 respectively. 
we're going to now take that back to our equation and we're going to say 100 times 3.64 minus 2.47 divided by 3.64 will be a value of 32 percent so recall again that we can stop here and just remember that a normal value is anything that's greater than or equal to 25 to 30 percent and severely impaired is less than 20, uh, 15 to 20 percent or we can convert this to make it easier for our colleagues recall that ejection fraction is simply fractional shortening times two so here we take our 32% times two, and we have ejection fraction of 64%. So what are the, some of the positives of fractional shortening? As you can tell, this was pretty easy to do. These are, aren't difficult calculations and metrics, and it doesn't take a whole ton of technical ability here. Um, and in most of our patients, we can get a parasternal short or long axis view. So we have two views that we can try to get this in. So what are some of the negatives of the fractional shortening? Well, because this is a single line M mode assessment of the left ventricle, you can have angle error. Um, and it is not reliable with regional roll motion abnormalities. It's also affected by preload and afterload, and it's not reliable with left ventricular, left ventricular, left bundle branch block. And that's it. Thank you for watching, and please send feedback to the email address listed below. Thank you.